So who is this in the book in the lower half of the well, I think print? He, I think he used his son Leonardo for the model. Okay. And he's divided these compositions with a human half and the lower half and a uh, an optimistic display of doves in various poses in an upper half and at the same time they're all these mar magnificent collages. When did he produce these? Well, I think that he made these in the, in the 60s and 70s but I don't know exact. I don't recall exactly when. He made them after the Nazi drawings were done. Okay. And so this was before you worked for him? Yes. Well before. Do you know, does the museum here have other Lozanski prints or is this... Oh yes they do. Okay. They have several of his best. Okay. And in the basement entrance uh, we can go and take a look. Yeah. There's a fabulous uh, Quetzalcoatl. I always took my students to that as an entrance to the museum. Definitely one of the largest intaglios made. In this kind of printmaking, what, what did Lozanski do that others had not done before? I think that he was willing to break barriers, not only in his imagination and use of materials, but also in his conception and the scale of his conceptions. And he saw no reason why intaglio or any other form of printmaking couldn't be the same scale or as important as painting and sculpture. In the process, is there something different that he did that others hadn't done? or? He, uh, he, he, may, he may have used plexiglass in mm. some of his color printmaking before anyone else as far as using that inert material. I'm not sure about that, but he certainly was uh, one of the first to use plexiglass. And, uh, but he also used a number of other materials. And in this process, I mean, the paper goes through the 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 press several times right yes okay yeah so for a piece like this I mean how many times do you think this went through the I couldn't I couldn't tell you specifically uh, without seeing all of the plates uh, laid out but probably a number of times okay. and the paper would have to be very resilient and hold its shape through multiple soakings yeah and so his paper was very very unusual and, and wonderfully strong when it was wet and is it, I mean, is it roughly the case that there's a different color that's applied each time, or...? Yeah, that could be the case, okay. or that the plates are shaped plates and uh -huh. need to be printed in a certain sequence in the composition. Okay. Frequently black being the last uh, of, the, of the colors uh, or of the inks. When you look at a piece like, well, like any of these, I mean, how long do you think it took him to, to be ready to print? I mean, what was his process like, and how long would he spend on it one of these? It could take a long time. Yeah. When I, we, we spent as much as a year and a half on an on a individual image. And then for this, well, I guess, can you tell from there how many prints were made? Yeah, that's number 40 out of 70. Okay. Is that pretty typical for the work that he did? Or? Yeah, he didn't, make big, he didn't make big additions because they were very, very... Uh, involved and only people who he had trained were really able to print. Not only making the plates, but printing must take, printing each one of these must take some time too then. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the printing could be very, very involved, yeah. especially if you have to let various layers dry. Okay. How many years did you work for him? I worked for him for 13 years. Man. And I studied with him for seven years before that. I think he came here in the late 30s to mid to late 30s and uh, the university had an opening and he was in New York on a Guggenheim uh, fellowship and the fir I think the first of five and that he received. He's I think the most uh, honored uh, Guggenheim fellow in history. This is, uh, yeah, this is sort of an art form where you have to, I mean, this takes a lot of physical effort to do this kind of art, right? And you get dirty. You get real dirty <laughs> and you get covered head to foot. And but it, it, you know, his vision of art is something you had to be totally immersed in. Yeah. And so the, his students were required to dig inside themselves as individual. Mm -hmm. And as he, as he put it in one interview, what they pull out is their crap. And, and that was really important. Yeah. And so 
I think he was a, he, he was a visionary teacher. Yeah. And the, at the same time, he was intensely focused on Intaglio. Right. And so he's unusual in his career and stature that he was such a master in one area. I want to run my hands over them. And so part of what attracts an Intaglio printmaker to the process is shallow relief, this, this uh, eighth of an inch embossing in the paper. And the ink is sitting on top of the paper. It's not sunken in. It's the pressure of the three-dimensional plate that's actually caused that dent. And that's a big difference from the planographic printmaking processes. And it's something that ties, ties for me, takes me back to the, to the ancient world hmm. and, uh, of Greece and, and Persia and uh, Egypt. So when the paper is in the machine there, what is it that actually creates the pressure? I mean, is it machine weights is, or is the it a... The machine itself is creating the pressure. It's okay. A, it's a double, a double roller principle and we would have seen it in our grandmothers and great-grandmothers basements in the old ringer washers. Ah, okay. Just imagine a flat bed of steel running between those two drums. Okay. And the lower drum has greater dimensions but is generally lighter uh, and offers stability and the top drum is solid. So my father had been a student at Iowa, and and that's why he had recommended. <laughs> that's why your father recommended that you went there. That's right. He okay. suggested it in very singular terms. <laughs> and yeah. did you know what you were getting into? I mean, did you know that, yeah, that he was there? Yeah, I, I, I had some pretty good advice from my father. Yeah, and which was very much the very much good preparation for what for what was coming. Yeah. I had been warned that it was going to be very difficult, and it was going to be really good for me. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Particularly working with oh, Mr. Lozanski. Exactly. Yeah. And so and I met many other wonderful people and other faculty uh, who were all great, great uh, bonuses. And right. of course, my friends and my wife. And so, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so we had an awesome cast of I mean, students from all around the world. And yeah. I think that I felt lucky to be there. And yeah. thought everybody was better than I was. Than I was you know? <laughs>